Today I'm going to show you how I shoot at super wide apertures, even f1.2, and nail the focus using the Canon R5. Lindsay Adler here, and I've never been much of a wide aperture sort of shooter. I mean, I remember the first time I shot with a 1.2 lens, it was bad. Uh, I was bad at focusing and uh, super narrow depth of field were not my thing. I didn't feel confident, especially on paid jobs like portraits or commercial work. I wasn't willing to take the risk. And so I stayed away from wide apertures for a really long time, but guess what? All of this has started to change. I'm starting to embrace wide apertures because of the amazing advancements in cameras like the Canon R5. They've made my job a heck of a lot easier, which made me feel more confident. Now, my first shot here that you see with the Canon R5 is with the RF 85 1.2 lens. I'm shooting at f16. The shot looks fine, but when I put it at 1.2, that background is buttery, delicious, and guess what? It is tack sharp where it counts, which is the face and the eyes. So I'd like to take a moment to share my tips that I've, I've discovered for shooting wide open. In fact, every image in this video from here on out is with a Canon RF 85 shot at 1.2. Now my first two tips apply to any camera and lens combo, but the last tip is all about the gorgeous Canon R5. So let's dive in. When you focus, there is a specific distance from your camera that will be in focus. They call this the focal plane. Anything on that plane, anything that distance from camera will be in focus. Now there's a lot of technical explanations to this term and this idea, but that's the gist of it. So when you shoot with a narrow depth of field, you are working with an extremely small plane of focus. So when you're shooting very wide aperture, this means that that plane, it's tiny, like even millimeters. And it's great because that's how you get that romantic look. Everything in front of the subject's out of focus, everything behind them's out of focus, but there are definitely some challenges to this. I mean, small changes in the subject or small changes in the camera is going to drastically change the focus. So an obvious example of this is when the subject turns their head. All right, right, so straight on towards camera, both eyes are on the same plane, equal distance from the camera, and therefore they're both in focus. But now the subject turns their head away from camera. The far eye is now out of focus, completely out of focus. Now, this isn't wrong as long as the eye closest to camera is in focus. Here's where it gets tricky though. Now the subject's eyes, if they're almost even on the same plane, but not quite, it looks super weird. So in this shot, you see there's a tiny turn to her head, hardly noticeable. One eye's in focus and the other one's soft. It's not purposefully controlled. It's, it's a little bit confusing and distracting, visually problematic. So at super wide apertures, the plane of focus is something you really have to pay attention to. Now, in that example, the subject was moving their head and changing the plane of focus, but uh, we can also change our camera angle and that moves the plane of focus. So I begin by shooting at a lower angle parallel to the subject's face. So the eyes, lips, and cheeks, they're all relatively the same distance to camera and therefore same focal plane and they're mostly in focus. They look sharp. Now, what I'm going to do is shoot at a higher angle. You'll see that only the subject's eyes are in focus, the lips, the cheeks, out of focus because they're a different distance to the camera due to my camera angle. Now, neither one of these approaches is better or worse, but you definitely have to realize the effect of changing your camera angle, especially when wide open. Even the tiniest movement of the subject or the camera completely changes your focus. When you change your camera's distance to the subject, this affects the depth of field. So the closer you get to your subject, the narrower depth of field that you will have. So here's an easy example in practice. So the first shot, I'm further away from my subject, shooting the 85 1.2 at 1.2. You see the rocks in the background, they're mostly out of focus, but then I step closer to my subject, take the shot again, same lens, same aperture, and the rocks, they look to be more out of focus. That's because the distance to my subject has affected the depth of field. So when you are shooting your depth of field, it is an actual depth, it is a distance, an actual measurement. So when I get closer to my subject, that distance, gets even smaller. Now, in case you didn't know, there are these things called depth of field calculator. They're programs and there's apps. And so what you can do is you can plug in numbers and see what your depth of field, the actual distance is. You put in your focal length, the distance of subject, the aperture, and this will calculate exactly how deep your focal plane is. 
All right, so what does this whole camera to subject distance mean to you? Well, if you're shooting uh, very close to your subject at wide open, you're going to need to realize you've got like millimeters of focus to work with. You have to pay super close attention to your plane of focus. And yes, this is true when you're shooting wide open, but you have to be even more careful when you're shooting wide open and are very close to your subject. Lastly, you have to choose the right camera settings in order to help you nail the focus when you're shooting wide open. Now the face and eye tracking on the Canon R5 is incredible. So what it does is the camera detects the face, it finds the eye closest to the camera, locks the focus on the eye, so the subject can move around, I can be shooting wide open, boom, all the shots are in focus because the camera is doing the heavy lifting, it's doing the hard work of the focus. I don't have to worry about that old focus and recompose and did I get the focus, you point your camera, it locks the focus, and then you can really focus on the things like expression and lighting and all of the other stuff we have to worry about as photographers. Now, with the R5, there are three settings that you have to enable to make this work, to really get the most out of the camera. So first, turn your camera from one shot to servo mode. Now, this means that the camera will constantly refocus based on your subject's movement. For example, at f1.2, if your subject breathes or you wiggle a little bit, it's not in focus anymore. So servo mode helps refocus and make sure every single shot is sharp. Now next, you need to turn on face tracking and lastly, enable eye detection. The combination of these three settings on the R5 has been fantastic and it's given me so much more confidence. Now, don't get me wrong, not every situation calls for shooting wide apertures, but when it does, I don't have to be afraid of missing anymore. Now, if you wanna learn more about the gear in this video, check out the links in the description below and be sure to visit adorama.com. Check me out on social and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.